Hey everyone, I'm Alan Thrall here at Untamed Strength Gym in Sacramento, California. This is the third video of probably four videos of this form check series where I review your lifts that were sent to me. So let's get started. First one is Jace. He's got a bench press here, 225 pounds for four reps. Okay, so right off the bat, this unrack needs some work. So watch in slow motion how far the bar lifts up. I don't know if it's you pressing the bar out too far, pressing the bar up too far as you unrack it, or if it's your spotter pulling the bar up really high, but it, you push that bar so high up, and I know that you have fixed J hooks, you can't adjust that, so uh, just depending on your arm length, you might have to press out really far. What it looks like you're doing is, your shoulders, they are, if you watch this real slowly, your shoulders are pulled back, your shoulder blades are retracted, pinched together. When you press, you actually push your shoulders forward. You can't do that. You gotta keep your shoulder blades pinched together the whole time. So you're, when you unrack it, it's just your triceps locking your arm out, and then your lats pull the bar down. You're not trying to move the bar with your shoulder. And then your bench press actually looks pretty good. There's not a whole lot that I'm gonna make, uh, uh, not a whole lot of corrections I'm gonna make to it. The only thing I would suggest is getting a tighter setup. So, actually that's not the only thing, but all of this has to do with your setup. Uh, so, when you have your shoulders, shoulder blades squeezed together, I want you to actually leave your head on the bench. You lift your head up like this as you lower the bar, and then you drive your head back. Some people do that because it helps with momentum. They feel like they can heave the bar off their chest, so they drop down, drive, they lift their head up, drop the bar down, and then drive their head back and let their chest come up. Uh, this is actually illegal in some powerlifting federations. You're not allowed to lift your head off the bench and you're not allowed to heave, so you can't drop your chest and then throw your chest up to get momentum on the bar. So what I would suggest is keeping your head down on the bench. As you lower the bar, think about bringing your chest up to the bar and, br and keeping your head in contact with the bench. When you lift your head up to look at the bar or you, li you lift your head up as the bar goes down, your chest drops and then you drive up. So there's a lot of movement in your body and you can see you lose tightness with each and every rep. You're, you actually, as the set goes on, you have to move your feet. You do a couple reps, you wiggle your feet back and then you push and you have to wiggle your feet back throughout the set. So with a perfect bench press setup, the only thing that moves will be your triceps. I'm sorry, the only thing that moves will be your elbows. So weights locked out, drop your elbows down, lock your elbows out. Your wrists don't move, your shoulders don't move, your butt doesn't move, your feet don't move, your torso doesn't move, your chest doesn't drop, your head doesn't move. Elbows down, lock the elbows out, that's it. And you can see that there's a lot of movement in your uh, bench press. So this is only gonna help you if you can tighten up your setup and get more stable on the bench. That's the advantage of doing a bench press is that you have a bench to get stable against. That's why a standing overhead press is more difficult because you have nothing but the floor underneath you to stabilize. When you have a bench, you can bench more than you can overhead press for this reason, partly because of the stability. So use that bench to your advantage and get as stable as you can. So to recap here, just lock the elbows out. So you might even think about flaring the elbows a little bit as you unrack and then your elbows will come into position once you start. So clean up that unrack. Don't let your shoulders jar loose as you unrack the bar. And then keep your head on the bench. As you lower the bar, think about lifting your chest to the bar. Think about bringing your chest to the bar as it comes down. And then when you press, shoulder blades stay back, elbows lock out. So the only thing that's moving again is your elbows. Okay, next video is Skyler. Skyler is six feet, two inches tall. He weighs 230 pounds, and he is going to deadlift 315 pounds for three reps. So the first thing I wanna mention is your back is a bit rounded at the start. So I would like to see more extension. Your spinal erectors should be working isometrically to hold your back in position. That's one of the, the benefits of the deadlift. So you wanna start with your back um, extend it as, as you can. You don't need to hyperextend or do anything crazy. Your back doesn't need to look like a half pipe, but you wanna make sure those muscles are working isometrically. 
And some people, I can see you are squeezing your back. I can see some wrinkles in the back of your shirt, which is good. Some people, just because of posture, are gonna have a little more rounded back. Some people are gonna have a really extended back. It's no different than looking at someone standing uh, at, at rest. Everyone has a little bit different posture, so everyone's gonna have a little bit different deadlift posture. But with that said, uh, now that I mentioned your, your back being rounded a little bit, just because I think your height you have to bend over pretty far to grab the bar. You're six feet, two inches, and someone who is five feet, two inches tall, uh, they're not gonna have to bend over as far. So because you have to bend over really far, I think getting rid of the shoes is gonna help you. Now, I don't often mention equipment as the first thing, or you, know, you need to change this equipment, you can't deadlift in these shoes or squat in these shoes. I used to say that in the past, but the truth is if someone came into the gym right now and they wanted to learn how to squat, I wouldn't say, well, first things, we need to ditch those shoes. You need to go buy some expensive weightlifting shoes. I wouldn't say that. There are plenty of very strong lifters who lift outside in the dirt with a piece of plywood and old tennis shoes, crappy bar, crappy plates. So it's really not the equipment that's gonna make the lifter. With that said, these are pretty big shoes. They have a pretty big heel. Uh, very comfortable squishy shoes. So I would get rid of the shoes and go with bare feet. That right there is gonna give you maybe an inch or two that the bar is now higher. Uh, so you don't have to bend over as far. It's gonna be a little bit easier to set your back. When you have to bend over and pick something up, if it was flush to the ground, your back would probably be pretty rounded over. So if we can bring that bar up a little bit to get you in a better position, let's do that. So ditch the shoes, go barefoot in socks. If this gym has a, uh, a shoe policy to where you have to wear a shoe, I would suggest getting something flat and minimal, like a minimal shoe, um, you know, a barefoot shoe, or a just a Chuck Taylor Converse. Some soccer shoes or some skate shoes are flat, sh flat soles. So that's what I would suggest for you. That's gonna help set your back a little bit better when you deadlift. Other than that, I think your lockout could be better. I want you to stand up tall with each of these reps. Show the entire gym, stand proud saying, I lock this rep out. Hold the weight at the top. So stand up tall, squeeze your glutes, squeeze your butt cheeks together, hold that weight at the top, big proud chest, extend your, extend your whole entire back in between each rep. And those are really the only things I'm noticing. Drop the shoes, that's gonna help you extend your back a little more at the start and lock those reps out. Let me take one more look at this, see if there's anything else to, to mention. I do think that because you are taller and you have longer legs, you might leave your stance width where it is, leave your toes where they are, just point your heels in a little bit and that's gonna push your knees out slightly. The advantage of pushing your knees out, pushing them out against your arms is going to allow you to keep your knees bent but your knees won't go so far forward because they're now they're going out. So you can bend your knees without them getting in the way of the barbell. Next up is Joaquin. He's got an overhead press. So I can see from even, even from this view, I can see that the bar is very low on your body. seems like most of these overhead press review videos, I have to mention this. The bar should not start at the, at the, at your sternum or at chest level. It should be high up on the collarbones. It should be between the collarbones and the chin. If it floats a little bit, that's fine. But bringing it way down here means you're dropping your elbows. And I think you're doing that because you're letting your elbows pin at your sides. When you drop your elbows down and when you drop the bar down, your first movement is gonna be out. You're gonna press the bar out. By bringing the bar up a little bit higher and getting your elbows more forward, pulling the head back out of the way, you're able to press the bar up and back. I'll just reiterate and I'll say it again because I've said it in the past videos. The barbell for the overhead press starts in front of your body and it should lock out right over your midline, which is right over your armpit. So looking at it from the side, the barbell starts in front and you have to press it up and very slightly back over your midline. So in order to do that, your elbow has to be under the bar, maybe slightly in front of it. So your forearm meat is definitely in front of the bar this way. That means the barbell has to be high. If you are dropping your elbows down like this, you're pressing the bar out here and then having to pull it back. And the next thing I'll mention with your overhead press is that top position. So at the lockout, if you can bring your head forward and maybe even press the bar back just a little bit so that you are structurally supporting the weight at the top, 
not muscularly, it's going to be, in, you're gonna have a, an easier time locking that weight out. So what I mean by structurally supporting it rather than muscularly, if you were to put your arm straight overhead, and I know that this takes some mobility, my skeleton is supporting the weight overhead. So someone with good overhead mobility can hold a ton, a, a high percentage above their overhead press because you're just holding it with your skeleton. My skeleton, my arm is in compression against my shoulder joint and I'm holding the weight here. If you hold it out here, you're now muscularly holding it. And if you held it back behind that, that midline, you would drop the bar behind you. So you, you're pressing out and you're holding the bar. Sorry if this uh, autofocus is messing with everyone. So where was I? So you wanna hold the weight overhead so that your arm is in compression down in your shoulder joint. You're not holding it out here. And if you pause this, if I pause this, right at the top, you can see that you're holding your head, you're trying to kind of stick your nose through. You need to bring your head through and get that bar back a little bit more. Other than that, good looking overhead press from this view. Uh, next video is Jose. So Jose sent two videos, a deadlift video and a squat video. I can't view the deadlift video, so I might review it in the next one, but I've got a squat, so I'll, I'll address it here. Okay, Jose, so for this squat, what I would do, because you don't have a squat rack, you have these like parallel stands, I would actually unrack the bar like you just did. So start at the bottom, do that Anderson squat, and then step back, because I think you should squat a little bit lower. So step back so that those, those um, stands aren't in your way, so you can do a full squat. So, a couple things. I think these could be deeper, and I think you're going to get more depth by pushing your knees out. So push your knees out, allow your torso to sit down in between your, your uh, thighs. I think you have the ability to squat lower, you're just not doing it. So if you don't have the confidence to do it with this weight, take some weight off the bar, lighten the weight a little bit. But squat deeper, push your knees out, squat deeper. Uh, the next thing I'll say is stop lifting your head up so much. Keep your head pretty neutral. When you squat down, you are you have to assume a back angle. You have to have some angle in your back. Uh, you have to lean forward. I want you to keep your head in that same plane here. So about here when you squat down. So look down more at the ground in front of you. I don't want you to look straight down, but I also don't want you to look up like this. And to go along with that, widen your grip. You're taking a very narrow grip on the bar and you're looking up. So you're kind of contorting your body into this position where you're getting really overextended. And that's gonna make squatting down to depth very uncomfortable if you're trying to, you know, like I said, hyperextend like that with your head, neck, and spine. So widen your grip a little bit, keep your chin a little more tucked so that your back when you bend over is a little more neutral. It's in a, a more of a neutral position. I think you're going to be more comfortable when you get down to the bottom of that squat. And then the next thing I'll say is, it looks like you have um, a foam pad on your barbell. If you can, uh, it might be for grip, I don't know, because the bar's sliding off your back, but I think that getting rid of that bar might actually feel more comfortable uh, because the barbell is not pushed back so far. So if you've ever done squats with an axle bar, it looks like you're doing kind of a low bar squat. You are doing a low bar squat. So it's across your upper back. It's not high up on your traps or your neck. If you've ever done a low bar squat with an axle bar, that extra bit of circumference in the bar stretches back like that. It makes it pretty challenging. And you do have to use more of a high bar grip. When strong men use an axle bar for squats, it's usually in a high bar position. Low bar with a thick bar is very challenging. Even the difference between a normal barbell and a squat bar which is you know 30 or 32 millimeters is very difficult for some people to get used to. It was for me at least. So don't increase the diameter of the bar by putting that pad on. Get rid of the pad, go with the bare bar on your back. If you feel like the bar is sliding off your back without that pad, you are probably putting the bar too low. Or what I would suggest is push your elbows up a little bit and there's gonna be a little shelf that your rear delt pops up and the bar should rest across that rear delt. So once you stand up with that weight, step back, do a free squat, lighten the weight if you don't have confidence in your ability to squat down to depth, or if you feel like you need those safeties because you might fail, you need to lighten the weight so you got some confidence. So step back just like a squat rack and then step forward to rack it down when you're finished. Push your knees out, squat a little bit lower, widen your grip, 
tuck your chin, keep your spine a little more neutral, don't hyperextend, and get rid of the pad on the bar. Next video is Martin. He's got an overhead press, 165 pounds for five reps. So this set of overhead press looks pretty good. I would just fix right off the bat that first rep. For that walkout, there's a lot of movement between you, I know you're hyped here, but there's a lot of movement from unracking the bar, stepping back and pressing. I don't want you to fly under the barbell, have the bar bounce around as you step back. You need to get, you need to unrack the bar in such a tight position that there is no movement. Once you stand up with your legs, you step back, you press, there's no movement. I don't mind a little bit of that hip bounce or a little of the bar uh, up and down before you press, but try to get tighter as you unrack it. This is like unracking a squat, just going on the bar, slamming your back against the bar, bouncing the bar, walking out and then squatting. You wanna get as tight as you can so that when you stand up with that weight, it is in compression on your body. So this is all just to say you need to get tight against the bar, kind of rein in that intensity so that you're not uh, leaking that intensity. Actually transfer it into a barbell with a solid, strong, sturdy setup and a controlled setup. After that, same thing I told the last guy. Press your head forward a little more at the top. You can even see in the mirror when I pause, you just do this kind of punch, this touch and go. You can see in the mirror that your head is pretty far back. I want you to extend at the top, bring your ear, bring your head forward so that if I was to look from the side, your ears, your arms are covering your ears. You're not back behind the bar like this. So bring your head forward. That should be a pretty easy adjustment to make. Um, and if anything, if you're doing these higher reps sets, once you press to the top, you can take a moment of uh, rest because the, again, the bar's being, struck, being supported structurally and then big breath, come back down and it actually might set you up for more reps because you're a little bit cleaner with your execution. Other than that, everything looks good. Great intensity, great fight. Clean up that starting position or that unrack and walk out and then bring your head through at the top. Next video is Garov. He's got 315 squat for five reps. This squat looks good. The only thing that I wanted to say, let me uh, take a look at it and figure out why I kept this video in the loop here. Oh yes, so squat looks good. I'd say 95% there. The only 5%, the only thing that I'll offer you is to stay a little heavier on your heels. You can see from this view that the weight wants to slide forward and then you have to kind of push back in order to get the bar back in the uh, over your balance point. So that bar should stay, if we're looking at it from the direct side, it should stay pretty much over your midline, uh, especially that last rep. If you watch in slow motion, you come down, 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 you get pitched forward and then you push the bar back. I would like you to be in a, such a good position that you just have to push the bar up and not fight to get it back over that balance point. So as you descend, this is where it's all coming from is the descent. So as you descend, just think about keeping a little more weight on your heels. Everything else looks good. Bar position, tempo, uh, back angle, your stance, all of that looks good. I just think that as you squat down, do everything the same, just keep a little more weight on your heels. And that should keep the bar more over your midline on the way down, which should set you up for a good balanced squat on the way up. Other than that, very good squat, good work. And uh, repping out three plates is always satisfying. All right, here we go. Kahit, 291 for five reps. This squat looks fine. There's nothing that needs to change. I just am using it as an example here. There were actually probably more videos that I received than, uh, there were probably more videos that I received that did not need any corrections. And I responded with, this looks good, carry on. I didn't include videos if there was nothing that you guys can learn from it. Um, so I guess that's to say that if your video was included in this series, you got a lot of work to do. Just kidding. Uh, but I'm gonna include this here because if you watched my last video, a lot of the squats that I, a, lot, a correction that I made for a lot of the squats was, once your knees go forward, keep them forward. Push through your toes. Don't let your knees slide back and push your hips back and turn yourself turn into this good morning squat. This guy illustrates this beautifully. Now I'm not saying that your squat needs to look just like his. He's got a 
like textbook high bar squat. What you'll notice is as he squats down, you'll see his knees go forward, they'll go to their forward most position, and then when he stands up through that, the initial bounce out of the bottom, and that sticking point where the weight, about midway where the weight gets sticky, he leaves his knees forward. Or if they kind of quiver back, he'll push them back forward. This is a, what I'm talking about when I say stay in your knees or leave your knees forward. This video is even set up perfectly in a way that if you look behind at the red uprights, you can see his knee pushes into that upright and then stays there through the sticking point. He's doing a really good job of maintaining his knee position, which puts everything else in line. His hips stay in position, his torso stays in position, his balance is good. So again, I'm not telling you you need to have a high bar squat that looks just like this guy. His, this is just, his squat looks like this based off of his bar position and based off of his body type, just how he's built. But the emphasis here is leave the knees forward. Wherever your knees go. Some people have to push their knees pretty far over their toes. Some people, their knees go right flush in line with their toes. Some people squat with a little more um, vertical shins. That's all fine. Wherever your knee goes on the way down, wherever the forward-most position that it hits at the bottom, leave it there, especially through that sticky point. So that's it. Nothing needs to change about this squat. This is just a good strain, good high bar squat. Next video is a clean. It is, who is this? It's James. He's got a 65 kilo one rep clean. So I said in the last video, uh, first, I do get excited about seeing these Olympic lifts. Um, and I am not a weightlifting coach, but I'm still going to give some feedback and some pointers because I like doing the clean and I also like doing the snatch just less often. So I can give some pointers. I don't think that people need to be, a, you know, gatekeepers of weightlifting to say, you can't talk about the clean. You can't give Olympic lifting advice if you're not an Olympic lifting coach. That's like saying you can't help someone squat if you're not a power lifter or if you're not a power lifting coach. Like these lifts aren't untouchable. Anyone can do these. So here I go giving some advice. This clean, uh, honestly, not the best camera angle because the plates kind of block everything. But I will say that at the start, your hips are too high, your back is too horizontal, and your shoulders are too far in front of the bar. This might be a good deadlift setup, but for the clean, you wanna drop your hips down a little bit more than a deadlift. You wanna get your back a little bit more vertical than a deadlift, and you actually want your shoulder joint directly over the bar. When you're deadlifting, your shoulder should be slightly in front of the bar, and you, the barbell should be right below your armpit. So, if we look here, I know this isn't like plumb center, uh, we're a little bit behind the center of the bar, but you can see that this barbell is pretty close to underneath your armpit. Uh, so your shoulder joint is in front of the bar. I need you to sink your hips down and rotate yourself back a little bit. Actually bring your head up and that's gonna help so that you're looking straight ahead. Uh, and your shoulder joint should be right over the bar. That's gonna put you in a much better position. You wanna be a little more vertical to start so that you can be vertical when you jump the weight up. If you are very horizontal to start and you stay horizontal, the bar is gonna to have to catapult out and you're gonna end up jumping forward to catch the bar. You actually do a pretty good job of recovering. I think it's because it's light enough for you. But man, this, uh, the from what I can see, the extension, you're doing a good job, triple extension, you're jumping the weight up. The barbell is getting plenty high. It looks like you catch the bar beautifully right over the uh, collarbones, right against the throat. Your front squat at the bottom looks beautiful. You stand up, all that's really good. So I would say that just that starting position needs to change. Everything else, continue doing what you're doing, looks very good. Uh, I would like to see a 100 kilo clean. Send me that video once you do it. All right, Josh has a deadlift video. He had a do abdominal surgery a few months ago. He's been getting back into lifting uh, since recovering. Uh, excellent, very happy to hear. So you're 225, three reps, three sets. All right, so I do have something to say about this, but it doesn't really have to do with your technique. All right, so the thing that I'll mention about your, de your deadlift, it looks good. 
So the easy, that's the uh, that's the good news. Your deadlift looks good. I don't think your technique needs to change at all. The only thing that does need to change is your speed on these deadlifts between these reps. It should not take you a minute to do three reps. I don't care if it is three reps at RP 10. I want you to don't stand up and let go of the bar. First off, leave your hands on the bar. Stay connected to the barbell. I hate that about the deadlift, the fact that you get the opportunity to rest or to stall in between reps. You wouldn't do that with a squat. Uh, you can stall a little bit at the top, but you're still bearing that weight, so you have to hurry up and do the next rep. With the deadlift, you don't, you know, or like the bench press, you don't get to set the weight, rack the weight, and then adjust and do another rep. I want you to leave the bar in your hands and do three reps. If you cannot do three reps with a pretty solid cadence, it's too heavy. So if you need to lighten the weight, do it. I think this weight is totally manageable for you. Do your reps, one, two, three. I think that part of this is you are trying way too hard. That's probably the first time I've ever given that cue. But you are making this much more exhausting and much more fatiguing than it needs to be. So you can take a big breath, brace your midsection, pull the weight, breathe the top if you need, set it down. You're taking this huge, this monumental, brace it as hard as you can, and then at the top, drain all your air <gasps> you're taking these huge breaths it is unnecessary you don't need to be that dramatic about it and if i just do that if i just sit here at my desk and i <gasps> my blood pressure is going crazy my heart rate just skyrocketed because i'm i'm even out of breath just doing that you are putting you're making this way more difficult and way more fatiguing than it needs to be take a big breath hold it Pull the rep, set it down. Even when I'm doing, you know, four, three, four, five reps at RP 10, I lock in, big breath, go, pull the rep, set it down, pull the rep, set it down, pull the rep, set it down. If I'm breathing, I might need to rebrace my midsection, but I'm breathing just kind of through my head so I don't pass out. I'm not breathing these huge, big breaths through my whole diaphragm and midsection. Maybe for the squat, but not for the deadlift. So, Dial it back a couple of notches. Just take a big breath, brace, stand up. If you need to exhale at the top, that's fine. Just don't exhale every single air bubble in your entire body. You don't need to relax and relieve every fiber in your body. Stay tight, exhale, inhale, go. Try to do that with every single warm up set. Don't treat your working sets any different. This way it's totally manageable for you. I understand that you wanna take it seriously and you wanna stay br uh, uh, braced but I don't think that you need to put so much effort into it. I think that your reps would be, um, for the sake of brevity, your sets will go by much quicker uh, if you don't give yourself a aneurysm in between reps. Uh, so that's it. The good news is your deadlift technique looks great, so continue. And we've got Brom. He's got a bench. Overall, looks pretty good. When I say it looks pretty good, uh, what I'm referring to is your start position is pretty good, which I'll talk about in a minute. The touch point on your chest looks pretty good. Your elbows are moving according to how they should. Uh, you're pretty consistent with your bench. There's a little bit of wiggling around, which I think could be fixed by squeezing your shoulder blades together. So what I'll offer here is squeeze your shoulder blades together, lift your chest up high. So like the cue that I gave, I think on the first video that I reviewed today, bring your chest to the bar as you lower it. Stick your chest up high. From this camera view or this camera angle, I should see daylight on your uh, lower back. So I should see some light coming in because your back is not touching the bench. Your feet should be on the ground, your butt should be on the bench, your upper back should be touching the bench. Your mid back and lower back should be arched. That means you're pulling your shoulder blades together and you're lifting your chest up high. So that's gonna help with wiggling around on the bench. The one thing I wanted, the one thing I uh, uh, wanted to mention, and why I saved this video was, 
you are setting up a little too far on the bench. So you're a little, you're a little too close to the uprights. And in fact, on the first rep, I believe you hit the upright or the J hook. So I know that it's difficult with uh, squat stands and a mobile bench because you're having to set the bench up. Uh, you don't have a, a, a set bench that's Im immobile. Um, so you, there's kind of some air of like how far you set the bench forward and back. But what I would suggest is, this is for anyone, as far as how far do I set up on the bench. People will say, you should set the bar, the bar should start right over your uh, forehead or your eyes or your mouth or your neck. This is where you should start. When you lay on the bench, the starting position for the bench press, meaning when you unrack it before you lower the bar, the barbell starts directly over your shoulder joint. So much like I talked about with the overhead press, when you're structurally supporting that weight, your arm bones, your skeleton is in, in direct compression down in your shoulder joint. When you're laying on the bench, now it's not vertical, you're horizontal, your arm bones should be pressed directly into the bench. So they are in compression. You're not holding the bar out over your face. You're not holding the bar out over your nipples. You're holding it right over your shoulder joint. That's the starting position for every single person, regardless of your build, regardless of, well, not regardless of weight, especially with heavy weight, everyone, if you had to hold the weight out over your body for 10 minutes, you would want the bar directly over your shoulder joint so you can hold that weight in compression. So that's the starting position for the bench press, your point A for the bench, right over your shoulder joint. If that's the starting position, that's where you need to unrack two, the J hooks should just be a couple inches away from that, maybe a few inches away from that. So for some people, that is over the neck, over the chin, mouth, Whatever, it kind of depends on how long your neck is, how low your collarbones sit, how long your arms are maybe. Um, so, you'll lay down on the bench, point your arms straight up to the ceiling. Vertical, straight, vertical to the ceiling. And then the barbell should just be a few inches away from that. That's how far away the bar should be. If you set up and your arms are directly over your shoulder joints, point up to the ceiling, and the barbell is about an inch away, you are too close to the rack and you are going to end up pressing the bar up and hitting the rack. If you have to, when you're starting that starting position with your arms directly out in front of your body, or excuse me, directly vertical, and the barbell is you know eight inches away from you, you're gonna have to unrack that bar really far, so you need to scoot back towards the bench more. So you have a distance here of bar in the rack to unracking of like two inches, which is too small, too narrow of a window. So you need to scoot down the bench a little bit so that you don't hit the rack. Other than that, as far as your bench goes, I already mentioned squeeze the shoulder blades together, lift your chest up, arch your back a little bit more, and actually use your legs to push yourself across the bench. And if you do have an arch in your back and you are smashing your shoulder blades against the bench, when you push with your legs and you push yourself across the bench, you're just gonna tighten up that arch even more and you're gonna not wiggle as much on the bench. When, you, when this bar touches your chest, you notice it kind of jars your body loose and then you push your leg. So there's a little bit of movement in your body. Again, perfect bench press. If you watch a bench press specialist, only thing that moves are elbows. Elbows down, elbows lock out. Elbows down, elbows lock out. There's no movement and wiggling around of your, of your body uh, on the bench. That's it guys, I'll see you in that part four probably in another week or two. Thanks for watching and always remember, Tread on time! Yeah.